Praise them. Hallelujah. What's going on, everybody? Um, hope everybody's having a great day out there. It's uh, Brother Daryl Mack. It's diddly, diddly, diddly D. That be me. <laughs> and I'm about to bring the good word to thee with a need to know Bible fact. And that need to know Bible fact today is Satan constantly fights God's will. Satan constantly fights God's will. And it's pretty self explanatory. And what it comes down to is Satan tries to hinder us from enjoying life and hinder us and distract us from God because when we're focused on God first we have the power if and we're victorious now if you don't if you fall for him trying to hinder you with the little tricks and the distractions and the 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 the, um, the flesh right and the worries and the fear and then he comes into those moments, Satan sees us worrying in fear. Now the demons come upon you, the fallen angels or himself, and will try to hinder you more and more and beat you down till you're on the ground feeling weak and helpless, right? But if you focus on him, then you are weak and you're helpless and you're a victim of the enemy. And we don't want to be a victim when Jesus Christ died a horrible death on the cross so we could receive his strength. God's spirit in us, the Holy Spirit, the Lord living within us to give us the power to be able to do, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, as Philippians 4.13 says back there. And when you got, um, you know, God's spirit, and as he says here, as I'm searching, it wasn't part of the video, but the spirit, the Lord is leading me to it. John chapter 14, and it's very amazing because... It just says here in 17, the spirit of truth, right? Jesus says, if you love me in 15, 16 to 17, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray to the father. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Again, it's not the Catholic church. It's not Mary. It's not Paul. It's not me. 17 says the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or know, nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells within you with you. And will be with you. I will not leave you orphans. I come to you. Jesus is saying, when I leave here, God is sending, you know, Jesus, God in the flesh, is promising you another helper, his spirit, the Lord, God Almighty Spirit coming to live within you. So, according to 1 Timothy or 1 Thessalonians, here is the scripture for this um, need to know Bible fact is that, you know, we're going to go through a lot and God has a purpose for me. He has a purpose for you. If you will, if you were in the batter's box in the baseball game, right? We got the bat, right? We're in the batter's box, right? This is me being in the batter's box <laughs> and I'm watching the pitcher. Okay. What do we got to do? We have to pay attention to the pitcher, right? Maybe we can see the grip on the ball he's got. We know the curveball's coming or just a straight up fastball or a knuckleball because I used to watch pitchers um, when they would grip a ball. You can kind of tell. Sometimes they knew I was doing that. Then they'd do it, switch it up in the glove, and that'd get struck out, right? But the main key when I was in, in, in Little League and playing baseball or at the park even, if I wasn't paying attention to the pitcher, and I was paying attention to the person yelling at me, Daryl, you stink. You can't hit the ball. And the pitcher's in his windup. And I look over there. Whoa, the ball went by me already. And I'm swinging the bat. I'm, you're out of there. Strike out, right? Not a good scenario for a batter. You want to watch the pitcher. Watch the ball hit the bat. Boom. And watch the home run go, right? But if I'm focused on... The distraction in the crowd yelling, Dry to, you know, Daryl, you stink. You can't play baseball. You know, what are you doing here? You should be, you know, um, selling flowers on the side of the road or something. I don't know, whatever, right? <laughs> um, but if I focus on the distraction, then I strike out. If we focus on Satan and his distractions, we'll strike out spiritually, okay? Now we're struck out. You know, what happens when people strike out? They throw the bat. They're angry. They're mad. They sit on the bench talking to themselves, hopeless and feeling, you know, like a loser. That's what Satan is trying to do to us. But if you focus on God, you'll always be a winner. You will always hit home runs. You won't strike out, right? Praise the Lord. And as 1 Timothy, or I keep saying 1 Timothy, 1 Thessalonians 2.18 says, Therefore, he wanted to come to you right? Even I, Paul, time again, time, time again and again, but Satan hinders us, right? So Satan was hindering Paul and, you know, God allows things to happen in our lives. I want you to know that really clearly, you know, 
God allows Satan to come into our lives. God doesn't make us sick. He doesn't do anything harmful to us. He loves us. But he allows Satan, who does all that stuff, into your life. A little bit or a lot in the book of Job, right? <laughs> he let him in his life a lot. Do anything. Satan said, let me have that Job. Go read the book of Job. Um, Satan had a business meeting with the Lord. He had to go like set up a meeting because he got kicked out of heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he had to go ask, you know, God for a meeting. They set it up, right? Like a business meeting. And, you know, he says, um, you know, uh, Job, you know, he's pretty loyal, but he, he's only loyal because and, and true because you have his hands of protection around him, you know? So God says, uh, you know, yeah, do anything you want to his family and to him but don't kill him. So Job had boils on the top of his, my mother had a boil under her arm. So boil under on the top of his head to his feet. He lost his children, his livestock, all his riches. He lost everything, but he still had faith in God because he knew there was purpose behind all his pain. He lost his children. His children were killed. I think wind came, the roof collapsed, killed the kids, you know, and people say, God's evil. No, God's not evil. God is the creator and creation is he giveth, he can take it. And that's just how the story goes. He is the boss. He is God. He is loving. He is caring. And all those people went to heaven, I would imagine, in my mind, in my heart. I feel that 100%. But God allows certain situations. So Paul wanted to go see people and preach and teach, right? But Satan was hindering from hindering him, the Thessalonian people, from doing so. You know, with sickness or with, you know, um, demon-possessed people, you know, acting evil, trying to stop them from getting down the road because they knew they were Christians, um, you know, from, from uh, uh, getting onto their journey, you know, to do so. So Satan will hinder us, but you got to know this, that God allows Satan to do so. God has a hedge of protection around me and you, no, no virus, no person, no principalities of darkness, no angels, nothing. Absolutely nothing or no one can stop what God has ordained on your life, okay? Keep that in mind and fear not because God says fear not 365 times in the Bible, right? One for every day of the year. So God, he just wants you not to fear because he's in total control. As bad as it seems, he's in total control. But if you focus on Satan, you're a victim. Focus on him. Now you got the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory. Hallelujah. You're, vic you're victorious. Here it says here, Satan constantly fights God's will. Is he fighting you today? Is he hindering you from doing the Lord's work? Is he hindering you with temptations of sin, of lust, or gambling, or addiction of some type that you used to do that you keep running back to? Is he hindering you? It's time to get focused back on God so now you can overcome those things and Satan himself that are trying to overcome you now and hinder you from doing what God has ordained on your life, that perfect plan and purpose. Have you, have you ever tried to do something for God and found yourself fighting through delays and roadblocks every foot of the way? I have. How about you? Right? You go to read your Bible. Like, I'm going to spend some time with the Lord today. I'm going to read my Bible. Phones ringing, helicopters, fire trucks, neighbors knocking on the door, asking for something. And it's like, I haven't heard these people. I haven't seen this many fire trucks. Uh, you know, it's all Satan trying to hinder us. It says, why do you ask though, right? Have you ever had all, have you ever been fighting through delays? And it says, why, why, um, why you ask, right? This happened to apostle Paul, right? To Satan constantly fights God's will because if he hinders us from doing God's work, then we can't build up God's kingdom here. We can't help those in need that God has placed in our lives that we're in need to help. Like Apostle Paul was trying to help the Thessalonian people stay on track. Don't worship false gods and don't worship men trying to be God, you know. Um, and and he tried to hinder him, but called, called Paul kept calling on the Lord and God got him where he needed to be when he needed to be there. But along the way, through the pain, there is purpose, and you learn to be stronger. What don't kill you makes you stronger. Again and again, the devil hindered Paul from visiting the Christians in Thess Thessalonica. I'm from Baltimore. We're Baltimoreans, right? Um, the Thessalonians were from Thessalonica. Praise the Lord. Satan wanted to stop him, or if nothing else, to slow him down. Because if he slows us down, then we can't help those in need. And they might go astray and, you know, um, you know, some good Christian folks might turn and be a Catholic or something, you know, and if we don't get them God's word and scripture and let the Holy Spirit, the Lord talk to them, 
it might happen. These people, you know, there was a lot of false doctrines out there. And there's only one doctrine, as First Timothy chapter 1 says. Only one first, there's only one doctrine. That's our Bibles. That's God's word. These scriptures, 66 books worth. There's no other. There's no other. Anything after this is a lie. Anything after our Bibles and Jesus taught and he ascended to heaven is a lie. Okay? Anything after that. If this happens to you, don't give up though. Okay, guys? Whatever's going on, don't give up. Pray for God to drive off the devil and push on through. And that's the lesson here. <clears throat> As we go through life, right? We're going to be hindered. We're going to have, you know, go through the valley. We're going to have to swim across the river with no boat. <clears throat> We're going to have to hike up a steep mountain, right? And all of these would be hindrances like, oh, man, why couldn't it just be smooth sailing, a flat ground, a run across, straight shot? No, nope. over here, down here, over that, climb that, through this. It's, it's a learning process is what we're all going through. God allows Satan into your life. I know it hurts so bad. Believe me, I understand hurt and pain more than most. You know, uh, my story ain't your story. Pain is pain no matter how we get there. What I went through, I stayed focused on God. I trusted in his plan because he showed me to do so. And Satan always tried to hinder me, right? The flesh came alive. I was depressed. I was hopeless. I was suicidal, right? So when Satan sees these three three um, characteristics of the flesh coming alive, he's going to come. And God will allow him in, into the moments to test you in different situations. When you're in a frustrating situation at work, the part won't fit. Or you and your wife have a disagreement over some bills or something or this or that. And, you know, you were supposed to buy groceries, but you bought a pack of baseball cards or <laughs> an antique, uh, you know, um, something, right? An antique car instead of, uh, you know, paying off the house or something. I'm not sure, right? But, you know, things like that, you know, we go through things. Um, not, not that wasn't a good example, but we go through things in life, you know, it's all part of God's plan. So as we travel down the road, things going to happen here down the road another thing's going to happen, but God's allowing the pain. God's allowing Satan to come in and work his, you know, crazy ways. You know, he causes sickness and pain and suffering and lies and the cute false accusations I know about for sure. He allows these Satan to work. But only to a certain point. He gives Satan a little bit of power to come into your life to try to wreck you. And it's to a point to where you have no choice but to call out to God. So God allows pain to come into our lives. And there's a purpose behind it. What is the purpose? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> to teach us to be more like Jesus. So whatever you're going through, stay focused on the Lord. When you're in the batter's box today, right? As we wake up, we get going whatever time of the day. But the main thing is... Stay focused on the pitcher in the batter's box. Stay focused on God in this lifetime, okay? And let's hit some home runs for Team Jesus because we are champs for life. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> All right, guys. Now, just know that Satan's going to try to hinder you. We're already up against the flesh. We're already, odds were against us being born into this generational curse, okay? Thanks, Adam and Eve. <laughs> but they made a mistake too. Satan is good at what he does. Right? The angels in heaven weren't focused on God. They were focused on Satan, and they got kicked out as well because they were trying to be bigger than God. So he can trick angels. He can trick you and I. But here's the key. If we stay focused on the Lord and his truth, because he is the spirit of truth, right? That's a T, right? The cross is a T, the truth. Um, then we won't fall for his lie. Lucifer the liar lies. We won't fall for them. So stay focused on God is where the victory is found. If you don't focus on God, you will be hindered. You will be um, distracted from fulfilling God's perfect plan and purpose for your life, okay? But nothing can stop it. But stay focused on God and get there faster than letting Satan hinder you along the way. He's going to put roadblocks up, but God's going to help you climb over them to get to the next stage, right? And what's next in your life. So what you're going through now is making you tougher for what's next. But remember, along the way, it's not going to be easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus, Apostle Paul for sure, or anybody who loved the Lord, who was fighting the good fight. It's never easy. It's always going to be roadblocks and demon-possessed people and demons themselves coming after us to hinder us, to keep us from, from here to getting to here to finish the race that we're all going to finish here soon, okay? So remember, when Satan hinders you today, Get focused back on God and you will overcome the things that are overcoming you to get the victory, to be where you need to be for the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Whew. 
Peace be with you. This has been a need to know Bible fact, man. Praise the Lord. I love you guys. Brother Daryl Mack, and I'm out of here. Peace. I love you. See you soon. <laughs>